In this video, we're going to talk about authentication and authorization and what they mean and what is involved for your campus network. Centralized authentication. This concept is basically so that you can set up your network so that you'll know who's using your network and possibly what they're doing on your network. That is what resources that they are accessing. This concept is known as authentication, authorization, and accounting, or AAA. How do you do this? Well, the first and hardest part of this entire process is to have a central database of all users on your campus or in your enterprise. For a campus, this needs to be synchronized with your human resources and your student systems so that when someone quits or leaves the school, their credentials are no longer valid. This oftentimes can be the hardest thing to do in this entire process. If you have this available and you know who is actually a member of your campus community, that is great. And then you can create a centralized database of these people and that database can be updated periodically or it can be updated in an automated fashion depending on what type of resources you have available to do that. Systems and devices will use this database. You'll probably need to set it up in a way that can be accessed by protocols such as RADIUS or LDAP, Kerberos, or place all of this into, for instance, an Active Directory, typically by Microsoft. It's very important to have some form of authorization that's centralized. For instance, if you need to restrict access to some of your facilities, such as labs or wireless or email, or perhaps some scientific facilities that you have with users who are affiliated to your campus, then this database is critical. If you don't have this, campus security can be difficult because then it's hard to do the authentication piece, which means, for instance, if somebody came on your campus and they began to infect some other machines or they were launching a denial of service attack or they were downloading illegal content, you wouldn't really have a way to track that person. So the best practice is to have some sort of central LDAP or Active Directory server that has this database of all the users. And this can be a single system that everyone has a login to with a password file entry. If you don't have a single central database of all your users, you can start with something smaller. You can take a subset of users, you can authenticate them however it works at your local organization, and you can create a database, for instance, for access to things like wireless or email. And you probably will use LDAP or Active Directory in the future, and you may even use it to start with this type of system. This will be up to you. Um, for your wireless network, do you run an open wireless network where perhaps you have some sort of SSID that identifies your campus and it has a pre-shared key? You can do this, but then you have almost no security whatsoever on your network. So this is where you'd like to authenticate users. And this allows you to know who the users are. Um, again, you need that centralized AAA database. And this also allows you to log access to your wireless system to a centralized syslog server over time. So you can use it for forensics and for seeing who's been using your systems. So how do you force somebody when they connect to your wireless network to actually authenticate? There's several ways to do this. You can set up captive portal software. You can use the 802.1x protocol, WPA2 Enterprise, to allow you to uh, force people to log in when they use your network. And your other question becomes, who can install access points on your campus network? So for instance, if somebody has a wired outlet in an office, can they just put an access point in there and provide wireless access to everybody on your network? Generally, most campuses in their acceptable use policy say no to this. But if your users are doing this, it's probably because they lack wireless access. So a way to work around that is to begin to provide it. 